So several people may ask me if it's possible to use an ABI encoder with the Minim. And that is possible. And I will show how to do that with this demo. And here I'm using the, uh, the Vasklevs ABI encoder, which also has a PWM output. And the reason to also use on PWM output is that uh, initially, before you have done a full revolution and found the index pulse, the encoder will not really help you because it only counts incrementally until you get the index pulse. And what you can do with the PWM output is that you can get to initial position using PWM so that you can start running the motor in closed loop even before you get the index pulse. And uh, the way it is connected, you can read in the data sheet of the minim. So you have, uh, I'm using the six pin connector on it for ground A, B, and I, and the temp sensor input, which also is an encoder PCB, but it's not wired through, and the five volt output. Now keep in mind, you cannot swap these around. Um, a has to go to uh, A, and B has to go to B, and so on. Um, one thing to note here, I will also write that in a note somewhere on the Pronto, is that the Pronto actually has A and I swapped on the first versions, which is everyone that is shipped until today. So if you have a problem using the ABI encoder in the Pronto, then swap um, A and I on it, and it should work normally. Um, the PVDM output, you connect to the 9-pin I.O. port, and here I'm, I have connected only one pin to this one, because that's the only one I'm using on this port. And uh, let's give it a go. Switch on the minim, and it should show up in Vastool now. And um, I have the default configuration right now. And important to do when you're using an ABI encoder is that you have to co configure the correct number of pulses per revolution. And on our AB encoder, that is 1024. This number can actually be changed over SPI or over I2C in this one, but we use this by default because it's still high enough resolution to run well, and it's not too high frequency when you run the motor fast when you have long cables to cause any problems. And the other thing you have to do after changing encoder counts is to set the type of encoder. And if you don't have PWM, you can use just ABI encoder. But we are going to use PWM plus ABI and write the config. And it's important to do this right and configuration before you do the detection, because if these are set to the wrong value, it will not detect the correct things. So now we'll go to FOC, do the detection from here. Uh, the current and everything I will leave as default. And now if the encoder is configured correctly and working, when you do the flux linkage detection, it will also detect the offset and ratio and inversion of the encoder. If not, then these will stay red. So let's see if that works. And that did work. And uh, you can also pay attention to the ratio because the ratio on this one is four, meaning that if you have it on the motor shaft, this will be the number of pole pairs and this would imply this is, this is an 8-pole motor, which it is. So it looks like it is working correctly, and then we'll apply those values. I will also change the sensor mode from sensorless to encoder and write. Now if I enable keyboard control and give it some more current, I will use the up arrow key. Yay! Yay! The motor starts fine. Yay! 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 So it appears to be working. What they also can do on our ABI encoder and probably some others as well, depending on how good quality or how good timing works on the PWM output, is that if you only need it for starting and you're not, not going to use it very high up in RPM, if you have like a low inductance motor, then you might only need it for starting, then you can actually get away with only using the PWM output. And um, we can try it here and write. And now, if this works, first we'll try it. I will just use the arrow now. Yay! Yay! And it does run cleanly, so it appears to work on this one. You also have to test this on load. But if it does, then uh, you could connect, disconnect all of the HAL1, HAL2, and HAL3 pins from the encoder, and you can use them for something else. So that is also useful to know. So, yeah. 
hopefully that makes it clear how to connect um, an ABI encoder to the minimum and how, how our ABI encoder works.